It's that time of the year. Let's start talking about who's going to stay and who's going to go. What is up, Finn fans? You can tell by the title. We're going to be talking about who I personally think the Miami Mid Dolphins should cut and who they should re-sign. So essentially, what I'm going to be doing is we're going to talk about who's free agents on the Miami Dolphins and then some players that have been talked about potentially being cut or haven't produced and you could possibly see them moving on from the Dolphins and whether I should, would cut them, redo their contract, or all of that. Again, this is my opinion. doesn't mean that what I'm going to say is actually ha going to happen, but this is what I think might happen or should happen in an aspect. But before we jump into the list of things that I want to talk about, being that today is Thursday for you guys watching this. Hope you guys have a good Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. Then you got off for the week, the weekend. For those people who work Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 like I do. I'm at work right now while you're watching this. Let's get into some trivia. It is Thursday, February 27th. There's only 29 days in February. Then we're into March. And then come March 18th. Actually, the 16th to the 18th. It's tampering period. Then March 18th, the beginning of the season. Oh, I can't wait. Free agency, my boys. Free agency. So, February 27th, here's your trivia. In 2017, I'm noticing a good amount of this trivia has to do with, like, the past three, four years. In 2017, who scored a team leading 89 points in his lone season in Miami? I will bet you a good amount of you guys are going to get this one wrong. Because I got this one wrong. Not saying I'm better than you. But I'm just saying, this one was a hard one. In 2017, so he played on the team in 2017, and he only played, I'm going to give, give you a little, a little more tip. He only, so he only played in 2017, and he only played one year with the Dolphins. He was, who scored a team leading 89 points? Who scored a team leading 89 points in 2017? Don't look it up. If you look it up, I... So let's jump into this. Let's jump into this free agency. Like I said, free agency is about little over two weeks from now got about what 20 days until free agency starts uh so we're gonna jump into this i'm gonna talk about who the dolphins should cut who the dolphins will re-sign who should the dolphins renegotiate their contract with but before we jump into that i keep saying before we jump into it but this is still i'm still gonna be talking about it i just really quickly want to talk about all the teams in the NFL, where the Dolphins rank when it comes to total spending on their team and by position, right? We'll run that down real quick. So the top teams are spending about $200 million, and the top five teams in spending in a total is the Pittsburgh Steelers, Kansas City Chiefs, San Francisco 49ers, Minnesota Vikings, and Atlanta Falcons. Three of the top five made it to the playoffs. The other two, Atlanta Falcons kind of fell Fell, fell flat on their face, and the Pittsburgh Steelers lost all of their quarterbacks at some point, and then were relying on their defense that didn't really help them. Then you look at the bottom five teams. You look at the bottom five teams and how much they're spending. At the very bottom is the New York Giants. The New York Giants did a complete rebuild. They have a young quarterback. They're only spending $6.8 million at quarterback. But this is going into 2020, so they also have a good amount of free agency. Tampa Bay, Miami... At th three to the bottom, Dallas Cowboys, which that's going to change because they got to resign Dak or get a new quarterback. The Buffalo Bills, who still have a good amount, you know, their quarterback is still on his rookie contract. That's going to help them. So you're looking at that's the bottom five. I find that very interesting. If you look at the Miami Dolphins, the average uh, for each of the positions that they're paying, when it comes to quarterback, they're paying 10.7 million. Most of that is going to towards um, fits. Uh, 4.0, uh, 4 million at running back. It's because we got all rookies and undrafted guys in there. Wide receivers is the most. Just re-signed two wide receivers, 26.9. 3.1 at tight end. 13.9 at O-line. That needs to change for the love of cheese. D-line only 12.5, which is, is a big difference. A huge difference from what it used to be, especially with Ndamukong Sue there. Only 6.8 at linebacker. It's because we got a few free agents in there I'm going to talk about. The most we spend is at secondary at 4.65 million. And that is a lot to do with Rashad Jones and Xavier Howard. They take a big chunk of that percentage and only a 1.3 at special team. And that's because one of our special teamers is a free agent. So if you look at that, 
you'll notice that a big chunk goes to wide receivers and secondary. That's because we re-signed a bunch of those guys. So let's jump into who I would cut and who I'd re-sign. So like I said, when it comes to who I think should be cut and or renegotiated with their contract, I wrote down about nine people. And these are the nine people that I think us as a fan base and even maybe from the way they produced and kind of with the way the organization is going and the, their thought process, these are people that maybe should, could be cut or renegotiated. Now, what I did was I gave you guys, I'm going to talk about their cap hit, how much is in dead cap if they get cut, and then we'll talk about, well, should they be cut or should we just leave them alone? And that's where we'll go from there. So let's start this off. I'm going to go from most expensive to least expensive. Let's just jump off the cliff and right into the water with the, the most expensive. Rashad Jones. Rashad Jones is a name that is going to constantly be thrown around. The man is going to get $15.5 million this year, 2020. A lot of people were like, well, he hasn't really been, he's been really injured the past two years. He came back after his injury. Um, what was that, against the Redskins? No, or against the Steelers? Can't really think of it off the top of my head. Look lackluster. He looked out of shape. He looked like he didn't know what he was doing. So a lot of people are like, are the Dolphins move on from him? He got how many more years left, you know, in the tank? Are they going to move on from him? Like I said, $15.5 million and a cap hit. When it comes to the dead cap, essentially when we cut him, we're still going to be paying him this much, $10.1 million. So essentially the Miami Dolphins will be saving about $5.4 million to cut Rashad Jones. Me personally, if you think about it, it's like for $5.4 million savings, you might as well keep the guy unless we can get, get some type of trade for him, which is a, a thing that we heard last offseason. A lot surrounded Rashad Jones. A lot of people were like, Doug, he's not following the Dolphins on Instagram anymore and this and that and all that stuff. Well, someone goes down again. Because if you guys remember, there's a few safeties that went down in, in training camp and uh, preseason. Potential trade. Could, it could happen there. I'd keep him. Uh, see what he can do. See what he can help with the secondary. Especially if we, you know, when we draft a secondary uh, a safety. Try to you know have him sit behind Rashad Jones or have him compete with Rashad Jones. Uh, I'd keep him. You know, five point four million saving isn't that much to move him, especially with the ten million dead cap hit. You might as well get your money's worth out of that ten million or try to trade him. So when it comes to Rashad Jones, I'd probably keep him. You're gonna be surprised with a lot of these people. You probably would just keep instead of cut. We're running around nine million. And the roster was already depleted to begin with. So a lot of these guys that you're like, eh, would I keep them? Would I, you know, what would I do in that scenario? You'd be surprised by how much you, you probably wouldn't be saving. If I if you cut everyone that I have on this list, you'd probably save 14, 15, 17, 20 million. You'd save about 20 million, putting us at about 110 million. If you cut everyone I'm talking about on this list. You'll see. You'll see. Like I said. 2019 didn't have that much talent, nor had those big contracts on it, and that's a good thing, because then you can either keep these players, or and it doesn't really hurt the bank. Next is Albert Wilson. Now, Albert Wilson, he's he had the hip injury, which sucked. He started coming on real hot, had the hip injury, and then all of a sudden was you know, kind of sluggish for the first half of the season. In the last five, six games, he actually started coming back and you could see him doing his thing, getting back into his groove. Now he's at $10.8 million cap hit uh, this upcoming season and only a 1.3 million dead hit if we cut him, which is a $9.5 million savings. Now I like Albert Wilson. I think he's, when he's healthy and when he's 100%, he's super dynamic. But coming in a year where the draft is deep, extremely deep at wide receiver 9.5 million and only taking a 1.3 million dead cap hit I could take that 9.5 put it towards the offensive line put it towards a position that we desperately need and I don't see Albert Wilson being somebody that I'd, I'd probably bring back now would I renegotiate and try to you know knock that 10.8 million down yeah I'll talk to Albert Wilson, but if he's going to stick firm at 10.8, I'm going to cut him and take that 9.5 million savings and put it somewhere else that we need it. Then you got Bobby McCain. Now, before I say if I should cut, uh, or if I want to cut or re-sign Bobby McCain, let's talk about his contract. Now, there's talks about Bobby McCain going back to slot corner, um, you know, 
Brian Flores kind of talked about it a little bit. Um, didn't really say flat out that he's going to move, but he talked about McCain and Jesse Davis, how he likes how versatile they are. Kind of see them going back to their position. He's a $6.2 million cap hit, and if they cut him a $5.2 million dead, which means it's only about a $1 million savings, I'm not cutting Bobby McCain. It makes no sense to cut Bobby McCain to save $1 million. Really makes no sense. I'm keeping him. I'm putting him back at slot corner. Then you got Jakeem Grant, the guy that they re-signed. Uh, it, it'd be funny to cut Jakeem Grant after, you know, having him re-signed and all that stuff. But I know a lot of you guys think that the contract he signed uh, initially was stupid and it was unwarranted and they should have waited a little longer, especially because he didn't play most of the season. He's only getting a $4.3 million cap hit with a $2.4 million dead. Uh, and then it's only a $1.9 million savings. Jakeem Grant's not going anywhere. Regardless if he plays, uh, you know, the outside position because of his speed, they put him in the slot, they put him at kick returner predominantly, Jakeem Grant's not going anywhere. Now you got Daniel Kilgore. Now Kilgore, he, the offensive line was bad. It was really bad. Now is it Kilgore's fault? I'm not going to say yes, I'm not going to say no. I feel like a lot of the positions that struggled the most were the left side of the, the offensive line. Kilgore, I don't think, did too bad. He's a $3.5 million cap hit this upcoming season. They cut him. There's no dead cap, so it's a $3.5 million savings. This is a position, and this is a player that I'm struggling with, whether I want to keep him. Because it... I just I I would really like to just redo that whole entire offensive line. I'd prefer to draft a, se a center. Um, so I think here, you know, as of right now, again, my mind could change on this. I'm going to cut Daniel Kilgore. So we're at about 15 million in savings, which is going to bump up bump us up to about 105 million in cap space right now. Then you got Charles Harris. Charles Harris struggled. For most of his career with the Dolphins this past off this past season, I thought he was going to produce. I thought him in a new position was going to do well. Ended up not doing well. Uh, really broke my heart. Disappointed me. Uh, he's a three point four million dollar cap hit. His dead cap hit is three point four million. They're not saving anything by cutting him. He's not going to get cut. He'll probably just run out his rookie contract. I think that the Dolphins and Brian Flores are going to really try to get him to play the way he was playing in the preseason, but. As of cutting him, it makes no sense. You're gonna you're saving no money. Then there's two players that it, your the cap hits are not even millions, but it's two players that struggled and struggled to stay healthy. Now Tankersley started doing really well. Then he had his injury, and then he had you know he couldn't come back. They decided to go with Ginkle instead of Tankersley to come back. He's a nine point five million, uh, nine point nine hundred and twenty five thousand dollar cap hit with a hundred and seventy six thousand dollar dead cap hit, saving of seven hundred forty nine thousand. He's not going to get cut. I could see him you know being the depth at the cornerback position and really trying to help there. And then you got Kalen Balaj. This is the last guy I'm going to talk about. Kalen Balaj struggled. He struggled hard. Then he got injured and he got put on IR, but I feel like a lot of players got injured and put on IR because at some point the, the team wasn't really doing anything. Uh, $870,000 cap hit, 294000 dead, $513,000 savings. I don't see him getting cut. I see him uh, competing to try to make the roster. So when it comes to you know the beginning of the season, I don't see him getting cut. Uh, but I think with I think we're going to sign a free agent running back, and I think we'll draft one, and then I think he'll compete. Uh, Laird will compete. Gaskins will compete. All these guys will compete. Uh, will he make it? I don't know. But to get cut and when the season when the uh, you know 20, uh, March 18th, I don't see it happening. So that is who I'd cut. Now, like I said, Rashad Jones doesn't make sense. Albert Wilson and Kilgore are probably the only guys I'd cut and save about what 14, 15 million. I said it's not too bad. Then, re-signing. Now, when the whole list of free agents that the Miami Dolphins have, I'm going to pop it up. It's decent. It's a decent long list. You got to keep to leave Evan Bam, Walt Akins, Jamarcus Webb, Richmond Webb's uh, relative, who I interviewed on this channel. Be sure to go check that video out. John Jenkins, Clive Wolford, Vince Beagle, Dion Lacey, Adrian Colbert, Trevor Davis, Isaiah Ford, Chase Allen, Matt Hack, Kendricks Norton, and Trent Harris. The one thing I'd like to say is to the Miami Dolphins organization, class act for keeping Kendrick Norton on the roster 
and um, helping him out after that terrible accident that happened to him. A very, very class act of the Miami Dolphins. Now, when it comes to who I think, you know, who I think about re-signing, Evan Bam or Bohm or however the hell you say, because I don't give a crap, unrestricted free agent. I think about bringing him back. Now, would I do it for a giant, ginormous amount of money? No. Uh, would I even do it if other options happen or if other people pop up? Probably not. This is more of, let's see what you can do. Let's see you compete, be a camp body. I'd bring him back for that. John Jenkins, defensive end. I'd bring him back. He started doing really well, and he started really helping uh, the defensive line, especially uh, the Giants game. There's a few other games where he started hearing his name, making tackles for losses and all that stuff. So I tried to bring him back. Vince Beagle. I'm bringing Vince back. The trade for Kiko for Vince was huge, and we won that trade hands down. Now, he's a restricted free agent, and there's a difference between unrestricted free agent and restricted free agent. A restricted free agent only played, I think, three years of their, uh, they all were only in the league for three years. Unrestricted means they played out their full contract, and they can go wherever they want when the new year starts on March 18th. I'll answer one of those questions, because I know a lot of you guys are like, but wait, what's the difference between this? I'll answer that in a second. Restricted, the Dolphins can tender him. So they can, you know, if there's a huge interest for him and a lot of people want him, they can put like a second round tender on him. And essentially if a team offers him more money than the Dolphins are willing to pay, they'll send him off and then that team will have to give us their second round pick. So I would re-sign Vince probably three years, 16 million, about 9 million guaranteed, pay him about 3 million a year. You know, that's, that's probably what I would do with Vince. I think he's, he, he earned it. Bring him back. Isaiah Ford is an ERFA. What an ERFA is an exclusive rights free agent. And that means that he played two or fewer years in the NFL. And the Dolphins can essentially tender him, which is essentially a league minimum, and have the rights to him. I would expect the Dolphins to do that. Isaiah Ford, come in, compete, uh, and go back to practice squad or make the roster. Isaiah Ford, when he gets the chance, he does his thing. Chase Allen is another guy on this list that piques my interest. Now, Chase Allen struggles to stay healthy, struggles to stay on the field. He's a restricted free agent, so they could put that tender on him and probably bring him in for a minimum and have him compete. A lot of these guys that I'm uh, bringing back or re-signing, I'd probably have them compete, except for like Vince Beagle. He, to my eye, in my eyes, is a starter. And then Matt Hack, the punter. He's a restricted free agent, so again, they could put a tender on him if they want to. I don't see anyone really trying to steal Matt Hack from the Miami Dolphins. He's the 20th best punter in the league. Could you do better? Yeah. Will they do better? Maybe. Uh, some less, not last season, 2019, but 2018, he struggled a lot when it came to punting. This season, he kind of came back. Uh, punters, diamond a dozen, but good punters are hard to find. Um, this one, I'd probably let go. I probably wouldn't try to resign him. But, you know, that is who I have as coming back, re-signing, and cutting. Be sure to comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Before I get into comment of the day and before I give you guys the answer to the trivia question, real quick, I had a lot of you guys ask me on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. A lot of you guys asked me, well, why can, like, you know, Greg Olson sign for somebody? Or why can, you know, uh, there's some other guys that are talking to players Hargraves and all these guys, why can they sign for players but like Evan Bam, John Jenkins, uh, I literally couldn't think of one free agent, Conklin, all these guys, why do they got to wait till March 18th? And that's because the guys that are signing and talking to teams now uh, got cut, whereas these other guys, their contracts expired, so they got to wait till 2018 start of the new year to go out and re and talk to players and uh, talk to teams and sign with them. So that's the difference. If you get cut, you can go out and sign with whoever you want. You don't got to wait till March 18th. But if your contract expires, like all these free agents that everyone is doing, the all, I expect them to go here and there and all that stuff, they got to wait. You got to wait a little bit. A little bit. Like Philip Rivers, the reason he is talking but not doing anything is they didn't cut him they just decided to not bring him back and uh, make him a free agent so i hope that answers some of you guys questions because i know a lot of you guys are like well, what's the difference there's the difference so before i get into comment of the day here's your trivia answer in 2017 who scored a team leading 89 points in his lone season in miami 
It's not a job. It's not a wide receiver. It's not a. It's not a quarterback. It's not a running back. Nope. Eighty nine points went to the kicker, Cody Parkey. Cody Parkey. So be sure to comment below. Let me know what you guys think of who I'd cut, re-sign. Like I said, things could change. Uh, my mind could change. But as of right now, that's probably what I'd go with. I'd probably let Albert Wilson and Kilgore go. Save that $15 million and bring back Beagle, Jenkins, maybe Bam, Isaiah Ford. So comment below. Let me know what you think. And let's get into comment of the day. Now, this comment comes from BD. And what he asks me is, Dear Dugley. Do you think we should trade back and build around Josh Rosen? Now, I get this comment a lot, and I have a lot of people, especially the people who like Josh Rosen, there's a lot of you guys who are big fans of Josh Rosen, think he didn't get a shot, he didn't get a fair shot, Our offensive line was horrible, he had a horrible time in Arizona, it's not fair to assess the guy with nothing, which I, I agree, I agree, I'm not saying you're wrong there. Um, don't be surprised. Now, this is what I'm saying to people so they're not like so hurt when if it does happen. Don't be surprised if the Dolphins don't take a quarterback in the first round. And they like what they see out of Josh Rosen in practice and all that stuff. I think they can go with it. Me personally, if I'm the Dolphins, if there's a quarterback in this draft that I think is better than Josh Rosen, that can be better than Josh Rosen, even with an inferior team, I'm pulling the trigger and I'm taking him. Even next year, the year after that, year after that. If there's a quarterback in the draft or in free agency that is better than what I have, I'm getting rid of that and I'm taking the better because I want my team to be better. But when it comes to, you know, should they trade back, it depends. It honestly depends. If the players, like the Dolphins, every NFL team, will have their big board and if the top three players they want aren't there anymore... It's a possibility a team can offer a first round next year or something to take Herbert. Maybe the Dolphins aren't that high on Herbert, and it's a smokescreen. Hey, we'll give you our first next year. So the Dolphins have three firsts next year. They could take those three firsts, move up, take Dexter Lawrence, take any of the guys that they want at quarterback next year, trade down. So I don't see it out of the realm of possibility. If I'm me personally, I'd like to stay at five and take BPA, best player available, whether it be Thomas whether it be Simmons, whether it be Tua, whether it be Herbert, stay at five, take your best player. You got three first round picks, unless we can get another first next year. Uh, but BD, I hope that answers your question. You know, Josh Rosen, in my eyes, uh, didn't get really a fair shot. We'll see what happens with him. I see him competing in the in training camp and stuff, but we'll see. But thank you for the comment. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. Uh, you know, retweeting. I, that's when I talk to you guys the most, especially when I'm at work and news breaks and I can't make a video ASAP. I tweet it out and get your guys' opinions on it. And I, I talk to you guys a lot through Twitter. Uh, so be sure to follow me on Twitter. Also check out my Instagram. I'm posting more on there. I'll let you guys know when new videos break on Instagram. I might start doing some more uh, videos and stuff on Instagram. So be sure to go check out my Instagram. Check out the Bit Boys. Going to be start playing some new games. Going to start playing the new Resident Evil when that comes out. Got a ton of stuff planned. Check that out. Other than that, give this video a thumbs up. Guys, we're about 20 days away from the start of the new league year. 20 days away from the Miami Dolphins going after free agents. They're going to sign the top guys. Don't be surprised if they stay a little quiet and then, bam, start going after these second-tier guys. But give a thumbs up for that because you like the content, you like the video. Check out DolphSock.com. Great, great site. Ton of content on there. Ton of, ton of, ton of great stuff on there. So be sure to go check that out. Other than that, hit that subscribe button. You guys helped me break 9,000. We're already at about 9 point, what, 3? We're at 9,030. Like, you guys are killing it. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to all you new subscribers. We've got a lot planned. So be sure to share the channel. Let's try to get to 10K. Hit the subscribe button. When you hit the subscribe button, hit that bell. Hit all so you know when I go live. I'm not going live this Saturday. I'm going live the next Saturday. Like I said, every other weekend. Going live at 1 p.m. But other than that, I will see you guys probably either Friday or Saturday, either tomorrow or Saturday. Uh, but my combine video, I'm going to do a full recap when the combine's over. So you're not going to get day by day recap from me. You're going to get when the whole combine's over, I'm going to give you the top performers of the combine and when it's all over, said and done. So other than that, I will see you guys really soon with the next video. But like usual, stay classy. Fins up.